Okay, so in this quick video, we're going to take a look at a common uh, usage scenario in SharePoint, uh, whereby perhaps you want to lock down uh, an item as soon as it's been created from a security perspective. How do you actually do that? Out of the box, SharePoint doesn't do this, but what you can do is use Power Automate to uh, automate this process. So let's take a quick look here. This is a very simple change requests list within SharePoint, and perhaps I want to use uh, a Power Automate to lock down items as soon as they've been created, so that only the person who created the item and the person to whom it's been assigned have access to the item itself. So the way that's done, is in flow. So let's uh, pop across the flow uh, here for a moment. Uh, in flow, what we can do is create a new flow, choose a new automated uh, cloud flow. And what we're going to do is give this flow a name. So lock down uh, change request as soon as created, for example. And then the next thing that we do is change the trigger, what actually is going to kick off this flow. So in this case, it's going to be this option here, this trigger, as soon as an item has been created or modified within SharePoint. So let's select that and click on Create. And what that's done is created my, my, my flow uh, to, to be used here. The first thing that we do is specify some parameters. Okay, so the site address. This is the site in which my, my, my list exists. So I'm going to choose this uh, uh, Demos site collection here. Uh, I then choose the, the, the name of the list that I want this flow to be activated against. So in this case, it's going to be my, my change requests list. Okay, so, so far, so good. This is all pretty straightforward. The next thing that we're going to do here is uh, put in a new step in the flow that says, as soon as a new item has been, been created or, or modified, lock down its security. The way we do that is using the SharePoint API. And to use that, what we're going to use is an HTTP request. And there's actually an action for that. Uh, within Flow. So what you do is click on New Step. Here, you select the, the uh, operation that you want to perform. So it's HTTP request. So let's just search for that, hopefully with uh, correct spelling. There we go. You'll see there, there is my action, send an HTTP request to SharePoint. Here, what I do is then specify the details, the parameters of the thing that I'm locking down. Okay. How do I do that? Well, first of all, of course, you specify the, the site address that you're working against. So in this case, it's my, my demos uh, site here. Uh, you choose the method uh, of this HTTP request. So it's going to be a post, okay, because we're, we're pushing, posting uh, information to the SharePoint API. Here, you specify the URI, so effectively the method that you're, you're calling uh, along with any parameters. Now, to make it simple, uh, I'm going to include the, the method itself in the text below this video. Uh, for now, what I'm going to do is uh, copy this and simply paste it in. So what this is doing here is making an API request onto the, the SharePoint uh, API. Um, there's a few things that we need to change or tweak here. So leave the majority of the text as is. Uh, but you do need to change the name of the, the, the list title here, okay? Because there's a method called to get by title, and we need to specify the title of the, the list. So in my case, my list is called change requests, okay? The other thing that we need to do uh, is you'll see here, uh, there's this uh, uh, parameter called get by ID. And what we need to do here is uh, make sure that we're passing in the correct ID of the item that we're locking down. The ID itself uh, can be found in the dynamic content panel. So you'll see here under the, the section called when an item is created or modified, there is this ID parameter. So we simply select that. And what that will do is put that in there uh, and that is now configured. So as soon as this flow runs, uh, what it's going to do is uh, as soon as a, an item is created or modified, it's going to lock it down. That's only part of the story though, because it's fine locking the thing down, but you still need to give access to, to somebody uh, for them to, to be able to access this. How do we do that? Again, it's a further step here. So click a new step and search for uh, the term grant, okay? And what that will do is find the action called grant access to an item or folder. So select that. That will uh, make this, uh, this uh, a panel appear. Here, of course, we can then specify Again, the, the details of the thing that we want to change. So uh, the site is demos. The, the list that we're working with is my change requests list. Uh, the ID of the item that we're, we're granting access to. Uh, if we click here, we can specify the ID. 
which is the ID of the item which triggered the flow in the first place. Here, we can specify the recipients who's going to get access to the item itself. You can, of course, specify hard-coded uh, email addresses se separated by semicolons. That's obviously not very useful, not very good practice. The better thing to do is add some dynamic content here, okay? So clicking on dynamic content, you can see that you can specify, actually, I want the, the person who created the, the, the change request in the first place to be given access. And I might also want to specify the person to whom the, the change request has been assigned. So again, I can specify both of those parameters and those are being pulled through from the, the, the list, my change request list in the first place. Do remember to put in a semicolon to separate these uh, the, the, the different recipients. The final thing that we need to do here is simply specify the role that these guys are going to be given. So the, the role here can be either uh, read only or edit, okay, or view or edit. So I'm going to give these both these guys edit access to the item itself. And there we go. We've created our flow. We can now click on save to save the flow. What that's going to do, of course, is activate the flow behind the scenes. Now what we're going to do is test it, okay? So let's go back to the, the first, the originating uh, change request list here. What I'm going to do is create a new change request, okay? So let's click on new, and I'm going to give this a simple change request a title. So uh, test lockdown of change requests. Uh, here I'm going to specify to whom this change request is assigned. So I'm going to assign it to Eamon, okay? and I'm going to click on save. Okay, so what I've done there is simply created a new change request uh, and assigned it to this chap, Eamon. Now, because I've created this uh, change request in the, the list here, what that's going to do is trigger the execution of the flow behind the scenes. And if we pop back over to flow for a second here, let's just uh, refresh the screen and click on all runs to see if the flow has actually executed yet. It can take, the first time that this is uh, put in place, it can take maybe up to 10 to 15 seconds uh, for the flow to execute for the first time. But uh, once it does, there you go, you can see there the flow has executed. It has succeeded, which is uh, which is good, which is a relief. Um, that means that the flow has executed successfully, of course. And looking here, we can see that, yep, we've got green ticks the whole way. We can see that the item was created. Um, we can see that the HTTP request was sent successfully to SharePoint to lock down the item itself. And finally, the final action was executed here to grant access to both the person who created the change request, which is myself, and the person to whom the change request was assigned, which in this case is Eamon. Now, let's take a look. Uh, now that we've seen the flow has executed successfully, let's take a look back in our SharePoint list and we're gonna check the permissions of the, the list item itself now to make sure it's locked down. To do that, click on the three dots here, click on Manage Access. I always prefer to go to the Advanced tab here because that lets you see very clearly who has access to the list item itself. And indeed, what you can see here is the item has indeed been locked down. So this screen in SharePoint is telling me that the, the list item itself has unique permissions. In other words, it's no longer inheriting its security from the parent uh, library that it exists in. It is uniquely secured. And indeed, two people have access to the, the, the item. Uh, myself, as the person who uh, created the item in the first place, and Eamon, as the person to whom the item was assigned. So there we go. Very quick, very simple way to create a flow which automatically locks down items as soon as they've been created or modified within SharePoint.